I'm Nathan with Make, and I'm here with Matt and John. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm John Mabry, and I'm a designer at Teague. Hi, Matt Schoenholtz, uh, head of studio at Teague. And what did you bring here today to MakerCon? We brought our uh, Denny bike basically an updated version of a bike that won a uh, organ manifest competition last year uh, so tell me a little bit more about the bike what's uh, what's special about it and uh, if you could just tick off a few things the the goal of the competition originally was to redesign or design a bike uh, for the the modern urban landscape our uh, our approach was to try to make a, a experience that gets people out of cars and on the bikes and uh, so what we tried to do is mirror a lot of the experience that people would normally have in a car um, to a bike. Uh, and what are some of the design factors that you included to do that? So we've included a lot of automatic features like uh, power assist functions, automatic transmission, automatic lights, uh, and integrated locking solutions. We're trying to make sure that the, the bike feels like something that it, it's secure, um, it's safe to ride, um, and it, it provides enough conveniences where people are going to choose it over perhaps commuting by car. And, uh, okay, tell me about the brain. What's, uh, what's the brain of this bike got going on? So we're currently using Intel's Edison uh, microcontroller. I guess you'd call it a microcontroller. Um, and that is basically the... You, like you described, that's the brain of the bike that's controlling all of our, our lighting systems, uh, all of our uh, kind of our, our uh, metric tracking systems. We have a, a bunch of sensors on the bike that are measuring how hard you're pedaling, how fast you're going, where you are at, and it's sort of keeping track of all those different, different setups so that we can feed that back into a connected app. Um, yeah. I think it provides a, a core interface to the bike you know, traditionally bikes haven't had, you know, a brain. We don't have a, you know, you haven't had a website for your bike. And so we ask ourselves, what can you do with a website when you have for a bike? And you can look at any of the data logging, any of where you are. You can remote unlock or lock it. You can figure out where your bike is. Um, the bike has a, a Bluetooth lock for the handlebar. And so you can control all that through the interface. And that's what the Edison actually provides. Um, and run me down the electric assist part. That is, uh, you've got a separate battery for that? Yeah, so there's two main power systems on the bike. One is, is for the electric assist, um, that's our high voltage system. And one is our low voltage, and that's, uh, that's for all of our critical systems, including Edison and all the lighting on the bike. The low power system is recharged uh, via a built-in dyno in the front hub. Um, so that system is always active. You never have to worry about any kind of a battery recharge for that. The big battery, though, we can't recharge off of that system. So that is, uh, that is a full battery pack that uh, will get you about 25 minutes of active run time, um, which is enough to get you two weeks of work uh, on an average day. Um, so that part is separate, but we do provide uh, a removable battery pack so that you can take that in to your home or your office and charge it there while the bike stays locked up outside. And we worked with uh, SRAM using their new auto shifting uh, e-assist hub. And so originally part of the competition we had an e-assist hub and we had a, uh, the auto shifting hub, um, sort of two different ones. And we've been working with SRAM to actually bring in their combined one, which has a torque sensor inside. So as you start pedaling a little harder, it automatically downshifts, kicks in the e-assist, and so you actually have that power when you need it. And uh, I understand you used some 3D printing in this project too. Could you tell me how and where? Yeah, so the original prototype, uh, we used a, a number of different fabrication techniques, including 3D printed metal or laser-centered metal. Um, and we did that for some of the more organic shapes that are on the bike uh, because it was the quickest, fastest, uh, sort of cheapest way to get there. Um, and it, uh, it provides a, a level of, of just a bit more of an organic look to the bike that we couldn't have normally uh, been able to achieve otherwise. I think without the expensive tooling of hydroforming, something that we didn't have access to for building the bike, we were able to 3D print the parts and then weld up sort of stock tubing uh, to that. And so working with a bike manufacturer, uh, Sizemore Bikes in Seattle, we were able to uh, actually get the bike produced uh, for the competition within a good budget. So. so what's next for Denny the bike? 
Well, Denny, uh, Denny is in in swing for production right now. Um, we are working with Fuji Bikes uh, on that, um, and we we're actually working with a number of uh, through a number of details on the bike that are going to be a little bit of a challenge for them to do in in production. Um, and we're showing off a few of those solutions here at Maker Fair uh, that are taking the original prototype from what was essentially a one-off, you know, bike. Uh, and helping to make it more of a production ready uh, bike. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry you didn't bring any pedals because I would have loved to have taken it for a spin. <laughs> <laughs>